Do you ever feel like your bike is pulling to one side as you're riding? Or maybe you feel that classic serpentine motion as you're coming to a stoplight. Or it could be that chain of yours that just never seems to stop stretching. It could all be in your head. Or it could be that your chain is not properly aligned. Today, I'm gonna show you this little guy right here, a $15 tool that takes the guesswork out of checking your chain's alignment. And this tool actually showed me that my old method of measuring the axle adjusters on each side was not getting my chain aligned the way I thought it was. I'm Grease, you're watching Grease's Garage, and I'm gonna help you skip the struggle. I wanna start this video with a quick story because for my entire riding career. I have always measured my axle adjusters on each side and I've used that as my method for aligning my rear wheel. However, I noticed that even after doing that, I would still get that serpentine sort of swaying feeling when I would come to a stop with the clutch pulled in. And this just didn't make any sense to me. If the axle adjusters were even, how could the chain be out of alignment? What I found is that on my particular hardtail, you've got axle adjusters like this on both sides. One of the axle adjusters is just a hair further forward on that axle plate than the other. Totally within manufacturing tolerances, I think it's only like a 16th difference between the two sides. But I tell you this story because I would not put it past the Harley Davidson production factory or the hardtail manufacturer you're using to have a tolerance of roughly a 16th on a part like that. It's not uncommon. We all wish it would be perfect, but very often that's just not the case. So once I realized this and realized that that method of aligning my chain was not perfect, I asked some friends of mine how they were aligning their chain. And my buddy Rhino Resto mentioned this tool from Motion Pro. All right, step one is gonna be to jack up the rear wheel of your bike. You need to get that wheel up off the ground. Here you can see I'm using a floor jack for mine that I bought off of an undertaker back when I lived in Boston that he used to move headstones. Yours might not be as haunted as mine is, but that's okay. Whatever you have to get that rear wheel elevated off the ground, go ahead and get that done. Step two, and this is a very important step, so do not skip step two, is to crack the axle nut. Most axle nuts will need to have the cotter pin removed in order to loosen them. On mine, it does have a little wiggle room. I am going to replace it at the end of the video, but crack that axle nut first. I cannot tell you how many times I've seen somebody try to tighten up their chain real quick and they're just cranking on those axle adjusters and why won't this thing move? You're stripping out fastener heads on the axle adjusters because they didn't loosen the axle nut. Step two is to loosen the axle nut. Don't skip this step. Now we're ready to back out the axle adjusters themselves. On mine, it's a 9 16th on the adjuster and on the jam nut. So you can see I've got an adjustable wrench on one side and then I've got my 9 16 on the other. Go ahead and back off the jam nuts and then by hand, just loosen up those axle adjusters until you can free spin this portion here that goes around the axle itself. Pro tip, while we've got this section apart, and this is something, I'll be totally honest with you, before I had the YouTube channel, I was not the best with maintenance. You might think someone who starts a channel like this has always been very strict about the maintenance on their bike, but that's not the case. Actually doing this channel has made me a better steward of my bike, if you will. So what you wanna do here is take this piece that goes around the axle, take a pick, scrub out all the dirt and grime and gunk that's in here before you move on to the next step. This is just one of those best practices. You want this axle adjuster to make proper contact with the flat on this part that goes around the axle. So take the time while you've got this part available to you, clean it now, and then you don't have to worry about it in the future. Next step here is going to be to attach this Motion Pro tool to your sprocket. The way you do this is you slip it right over the chain and then you're just gonna tighten up the large set screw until it makes contact with the sprocket. And what this is essentially doing is it's fitting up square on the sprocket and the alignment rod, the silver part, is going to run parallel to the chain. What this does is it allows you to see if your sprocket and your chain are actually running in perfect parallel. The way we check this is by looking down from either the top or you can look from the rear of the sprocket down the chain. I'll roll in a clip right here of what that looks like from the top down and now from the rear. 
The next step is to tighten the adjusters just by hand. We're just looking to get things snugged up. So make sure that that axle adjuster is actually fitting into the squared off slot on the piece that goes around the axle. Do this on both sides. Once you can no longer tighten the adjuster with just your finger, then you're ready to move on to the next step. I just wanna mention the two opposing forces that we're gonna be working with here. One is the chain alignment itself. You're gonna be looking down this rod to see if it lines up with your chain. On the other side of that equation is the tension of the chain itself. As you are making adjustments on these axle adjusters, pushing them in and out to get this rod lined up, I want you to remember to periodically check your chain because what you don't want to do is only tighten the adjusters and then find out at the end, once you've gotten your alignment perfect, that your chain is so tight you can't even move the thing. So every once in a while, as you're dialing in this alignment here, consider loosening one side as opposed to tightening the other side because that will help you manage how tight that chain is getting. The next step here is going to be to go in half turn increments, once on the left, once on the right, until that chain is at the correct tightness. Everybody has a different opinion on how tight a chain ought to be, so what I'm gonna do for you is show you visually in this clip right here about how much play I like in my chain. You can set yours however you feel is best. The way you're gonna use this tool is very simple. Once you've got it clamped onto your chain, I want you to look right here where the alignment rod meets with the tool itself. You wanna look at how much of the exposed chain you can see right here at this spot, and then bring your eyes down to the end of the rod, and you wanna make what you see down here match what you see over here. That'll mean that they're going in perfect parallel. So as you're making adjustments here, think about where the wheel needs to move in order to create that same picture on this side that you have on this side. Make your adjustments, tightening and loosening, tightening and loosening until you've got that perfect picture across. And then once you've got that, double check that your chain is at the appropriate tension. Once you've got both of those things at the same time, it is time to tighten down the lock nuts on your axle adjusters and then tighten down the axle itself. If you had to remove your cotter pin, or even if you didn't need to remove the cotter pin, it's always a good idea to pop a new one in at this time, just so you know that it's not some old worn out pin that's gonna break loose in a couple of miles. In addition to that, this is the perfect time to lubricate your chain. You've already got the rear wheel elevated. You've already got the bike in perfect position for it. Spray some lube on the chain as you spin the wheel, coat the entire chain with that lube, and then run a rag across it to make sure you've soaked up any excess lube that's on the chain so you're not spitting it all over your pant leg when you go for that first ride. And speaking of rides, the next step in the process is gonna be for you to go for a ride. You wanna test and make sure that the alignment you just did is working the way that you hoped it would. Pull that clutch in, come to a slow stop and see if you're still feeling that serpentine motion. See if you still feel the bike pulling to one side or the other as you ride. If all of these symptoms have gone away, you are now ready to go for the rest of the season. If you're enjoying these kind of technical how-to videos and you want to support the channel, the link is down below where you can pick up some Greases Garage merchandise. I've got shirts and hats available. And in addition to that, I have a new concept that I'm rolling out now, which is build coaching. So if you are working on a build and you're stuck and you're frustrated and you don't have a mentor and you're looking for somebody to help accelerate the process of that build, you can shoot me an email at greasesgarage at gmail.com to bring me on as a build coach to be your or personal guide to getting your next build across the finish line even quicker. In the meantime, check out this video right here for more technical tips, and I will catch you guys next week.